Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Britt Eklund is more than just a Bond girl. Her life is filled with trauma, yet she remains resolute. Counting four failed relationships and three children with different fathers, Britt always picked the short stick when it came to a relationship. However, what made her feel alone was the death of her mum. Fame doesn't protect stars from trauma. If anything, it seems to attract it. Why Britt Eklund considered herself ugly. As you all know how much I appreciate you, my viewers, so I want to thank you for your generous comments and for the Patreons. This video would not have been possible without you, and thanks to those who watched the video right to the end. Subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Actress Britt Eklund is best known for her marriage to Peter Sellers and her role as a Bond girl. She suffered from an unhealthy relationship, the loss of her mother to Alzheimer's and body dysmorphic disorder. She only went to see a therapist once and it was when her mother died after being diagnosed with Alzheimer's in 1980. Her mother's death added to the broken relationships that trailed her and she was the one person the actress was truly close to. Her trip to the therapist got her antidepressants, but she only took them three times. Her mentality was to face her challenges and take care of herself. The actress believed no one could truly do anything for her except herself, and that included using antidepressants. So, despite her failed relationships and the stigma that came from her suggesting self-partnership, she just continued to roll ahead, nothing to stop her. Her trauma didn't stop her from watching out for the newest generation and warns them that being a modern woman was more than having social media accounts and exposing their body for payment she all but called peanuts. The actress would know a lot about body exposure and its effects. She also knows how conforming to current trends in beauty standards could be problematic. After all, she worked on her body too, but it wasn't for people. It was strictly for herself. The actress has a bad body dysmorphic disorder case, meaning she only saw the flaws in her body. If you walked up to her and called her beautiful, she would think you were making a joke of her. So she continued to do procedure after procedure until she did the one that destroyed her looks. An improperly done lip filling would have the actress's lips ruined. The process of melting the substance used to fill her lips in 1994 was excruciatingly painful, and also unsuccessful. This was the same for other attempts. Cosmetic surgery, which she has once praised for people in their forties, has spoiled her looks. The tabloids wouldn't take it easy with her. She has ruined her face and dominated the pages of tabloids, making the regretful actress feel even more regretful. She stopped having cosmetic surgery and decided to stick with herself the way she was. It took her ruining her face before she learned one thing. She found that she looked better than before she started doing surgeries. She saw what people saw in her, but it had become too late. Mental health problems are like that. They sneak up on us and leave us feeling less than we are. While Eklund dealt with her multiple failed relationships by cutting them out and discarding them from being a part of her, the same might not work for anyone else. Even it could be argued that the approach didn't work for her, perhaps her romantic situation and life may have been different if she had sought help when it was glaring she needed it. The sexy actress was born in Stockholm, Sweden, where she started her career with walk-on roles, modelling jobs and chewing gum ads. She joined Fox and got a role as a Bond girl in The Man with a Golden Gun later in her career, which was the highest point of her career as a film star. She did star in successful films like Get Carter and The Wicker Man, she also played a role in Scandal as Mariela Novotny, the woman who hosted Swinging London. The sexy actress found relevance in appearing in television series and television shows. After all, she switched to stage plays with her motivation being her children mustn't starve. Eklund, another blonde bombshell who lived a rock and roll life. No, she wasn't a rock and roller. She just had high-profile celebrity relationships with three of them. Rod Stewart, Phil Lewis and Slim Jim Phantom, drummer of the modern rockabilly group Stray Cats. She also was with record label executive Lou Adler. Eklund must love music a lot to have impactful relationships with those connected to music. 
She had a child, Nikolai, with Lou, and she married a man she was 18 years older than. Slim Jim Phantom was 28 years old when he married the delectable Brit, who still looked ravishing despite being close to her 50s at the time. The two have a son together, Thomas Jefferson Eckland MacDonnell. Her son's name is a mouthful. No wonder, she said. If we were going to use all these names, he'll never get anywhere. Unfortunately, her marriage with Slim Jim Phantom ended. However, none of her subsequent marriages gave her the recognition of her first marriage, the one with Peter Sellers, where she would have her first child. The relationship that powered her into stardom was her first one with Peter in 1964. Her relationship with Slim Jim Phantom mirrored her marriage to the comedic master, Peter Sellers. It was her first marriage, and while she was 21, her husband at the time was older than her by 16 years. This relationship was one that she regrets, and it would appear that she still carries a grudge against Sellers till today. It was her first marriage. He made her believe she was the most important thing, but turned out not everything that glitters has a right mind. I thought that I would like to meet what I saw. This was the statement that began everything, and the thought process behind this statement was Sellers thought there was some cosmic alignment that warranted that he and the sexy Swedish star met. Brit was Fox's latest acquisition, and she had come to the UK for the studio to unveil her to the world, and also for her role in Guns at Batassi. A 21-year-old starlet was at the Dorchester Hotel in London when she heard a knock on the door. In her towel she met with a man who presented himself as Peter Sellers' valet, and asked if Brit was likely to come to his suite. Turns out Peter was in the same hotel, and if Brit had known she wouldn't have accepted the invitation. However, at 21 she was in a strange city, didn't know anyone, she was bored, and there was someone willing to host her. Not many people would say no to this, especially when gossip magazines had already brought knowledge of the man to her. Brit Eckland honoured the invitation and didn't dress as sultrily as Peter would expect. She wore different layers of cloth, and to her younger and more impressionable self, Sellers was one of the most sophisticated men she had seen. However, a red flag emerged, which she closed her eyes to, and it would be like that until they got married. One of the first red flags was Sellers' inability to talk about himself and his career to the actress at the time. When Britt appeared not to have a clue about the extent of Peter's legend, he took her to the cinema instead to see Pink Panther, where he played the ineffective bumbling Inspector Clouseau. Well, how could he? As Britt would discover, Peter was a fractured man. From the first meeting, Peter took charge of the relationship, and the delectable Brit went along with it. He made elaborate romantic gestures that fit into what she had read in romantic novels. He got her a dashant puppy, which she named Pepper, and every flower bloom from the Dorchester Hotel's flower shop. All of these made the actress deliriously happy, and she fell madly in love. So, when Peter said to her, "'I've told the press we're getting married. Is that okay with you?' The young Butte didn't know what to say, she added. Even to this day I don't know what I said. Such was the whirlwind nature of her romance with Sellers, which robbed her of reasoning and her puppy Pepper. Ten days after the statement, which also doubled as a proposal, they married. The fast-paced romance suited Brit's impulsive and willful nature. It seemed even if her parents hadn't approved, she would have gone ahead with the marriage. The actress's love life is a reflection of her personality, and when she was younger, before meeting Peter, she claimed to fall in love every five seconds. She also said she was younger. When someone falls down in front of her, she falls in love with the person. It kind of makes sense now, as she likened herself to a steamroller, always going forward without any form of brakes in her. She rolled into what would haunt her and leave her to be best known as Peter Sellers' ex-wife. Her honeymoon with Sellers gave her another red flag, but she was too in love to notice. The late comedic great chose the clothes she would wear during and after their brief honeymoon. The two went their separate ways to the set of various movies, but Sellers wasn't quite comfortable with his young bride, and another younger and more virile actor being together. His possessive nature is shown full-blown in this period. He sent people to spy on her for him, and followed that with a three-page letter which was more or less him talking about his insecurity rather than his love for her. He used the opportunity to ask his young bride to visit him, and promised to smooth things over with the director of Gun in Batassi. He lied, 
He didn't. Instead, he kept the young actress from leaving under the guise of following the doctor's instructions that Brit needed to rest. Brit didn't need to rest. She was, in her own words, as fit as a fiddle. Still, she listened to him, and they would later return to their glamorous marble palace in the UK. There she was out through emotional and psychological warfare, which lasted until her marriage to the man ended. However, not before the sex incident. Yes, the first of Peter's many heart attacks came from sex. Peter had promised in his letter that he wanted to make hard love to Brit. Apparently, he meant it. The man went to take pills that would significantly boost his virility and his ability to please his wife thoroughly. What happened next didn't please her. It scared her. Instead of having a mind-shattering pleasure, he had a life-threatening heart attack, which would put him on life support and have Eklund play nurse to him till he recovered. Remembering the harrowing experience, she said, I prayed to God a lot, even though I'm not a religious person, just hoping and believing that he would pull through. You would think Peter would be grateful to Brit, but he wasn't, and when she got pregnant it took the intervention of Peter's director friend for her to be able to keep her pregnancy in 1965. The pregnancy didn't save Brit from suffering, and sometimes the humiliation was public. In their years together they only appeared in three films, and on the set of one of those films Brit was publicly insulted by her husband. Their fights get so ugly that Eklund would seek refuge from friends as she dealt with multiple threats of divorce and apologies. Honestly, after all of this, why didn't she leave? It turned out that Eklund only found out the nature of what she experienced with Sellers until she left him, but at the time she didn't know that marital issues could be in that form. While there are rumours of violence, the actress has exonerated Peter from these allegations, as she said if it were so, she would have left earlier. So she continued to endure being like a prisoner in her own marriage. She can't talk to her parents in Swedish over the phone, as it would send Peter completely over the edge. He would enter into an endless rant, which would eventually require her to leave the house if she wanted her peace. For someone who filled Eklund's closet with bikinis, Peter doesn't like his wife wearing revealing outfits, and his wife doesn't too. She hated being seen as a sex symbol, and she claimed not even to know what it meant until people started to refer to her as one. I never purposely posed half-naked, she said, and to avoid places where she would be naked, she claimed to wrap herself with black camera tape, even if taking it off was bothersome. She refused to be seen as a sex symbol, but she admitted that her presence in Bond was one of a sex kitten. Still, she was proud to be a Bond girl and expressed sympathy for the current Bond girls, who she believed are subjected to various demands so that the newer Bond films would be politically correct. So, since she wasn't one to needlessly display her body when Hugh Hefner got into Peter's head that he had salacious pictures of her, her husband got angry. Hugh wanted to manipulate Sellers into providing the pictures of Eklund he had with him. Hugh knew, as someone who took pictures, Sellers would have some interesting pictures of his wife. Turned out that Hefner was bluffing, but the experience left Eklund even more hurt as her husband didn't trust her. He had spent long hours insulting her and calling her unprintable names, only for him to see the pictures, which barely had Brit's bare shoulders. Still, Brit didn't leave until Rome. Rome wasn't built in a day, and certainly her divorce from Sellers didn't happen in a day too. The couple had a bust-up in Rome, which started because paparazzi wanted to take pictures of Brit, and she graciously allowed them. Peter was livid. He went ballistic and went on and on, all through the night, until about 5am, when some said she had to take Valium to sleep. Nonetheless, Sellers threw her out of the hotel room, and that action made Brit know she had had enough. She left that night and didn't look back. When Peter came and begged, she didn't listen. She finally had it with him, and for the first time in years, she felt free. The torture was over, but she wouldn't enjoy relationships still. The men she was with afterward, none stuck. The longest one was with Slim Jim Phantom, and it was just five years of marriage and two years of dating. However, the difference in age between the two made the relationship difficult to continue. So, after four unsuccessful relationships and three children with three different dads, she decided the relationship wasn't for her. This put her at odds with the media. They've always trailed her all her life and made news of her relationships not always in the most positive manner. 
If they aren't picking her relationships, then it's her looks and her use of plastic surgery to maintain a youthful appearance, her botched lip-filling surgery, and so on. In fact, most of the press she's gotten is negative, and she attributed this to jealousy. She said, So many other people have done things that I've done. They just decided to single me out, she continued. I kind of maintained a certain physical image, and I've maintained myself very well. Despite some surgical touches here and there, the actress was particular about getting fit. Eklund is a grandmother with one of her grandchildren dealing with a rare, untreatable genetic condition, adrenoleukodystrophy, which causes brain degeneration. The delectable actress has begun to create awareness for the disease in the UK. Her fame to her is not just a means to become a diva, but a way to genuinely help people. Now you've just heard from Britt Eklund's side of things, but the picture is not complete without knowing the other side. How Peter Sellers' mental disorder tortured his loved ones. Watch this video.